on the 6th of August 1945. The most powerful weapon ever made by mankind destroyed everything within a one mile radius to dust in the city of Hiroshima, Japan. This was a dark patch to the entire human race, killing thousands of lives and injuring almost everyone around Hiroshima, Japan, due to the energy and the radiation emitted. The atomic bomb destroyed the entire city of Nagasaki in the World War II. The movie Wolverine, which was published in 2013, shows how Logan saved the soldier from the explosion of the atomic bomb and how large the explosion was. Hey guys, now we are in a world which have weapons which are thousand times powerful than the atomic bombs which were dropped to Hiroshima and Nagasaki. These are said to be thermonuclear weapons or most commonly known as hydrogen bombs. I have already told you guys that the atomic bomb could destroy everything within a one mile radius. But the question comes how powerful is the hydrogen bomb? The hydrogen bomb would destroy everything within a 10 mile radius. At present, there are 10 thousands of hydrogen bombs. This could even eliminate the human race if everything is dropped at once. Why are these bombs this powerful? How do these bombs function? The answer is coming up right now. The atomic bomb would emit an energy equivalent of 15,000 tons of TNT. How much energy would the hydrogen bomb emit? The hydrogen bomb would emit an energy equivalent of around 10 million tons of TNT. This amount of energy is so huge that it could destroy everything it catches. So how does this energy form? The energy is formed by splitting of atoms. So what are the atoms mainly used here? The hydrogen atom is the atom that is being used here. How was the energy being released in the atomic bomb laid in Hiroshima, Japan? It had the principle of splitting of energy. So how does the energy being released in the hydrogen bomb? The basic principle is fusion of the atoms. This would emit a huge amount of energy that would destroy everything. The fusion process works in the following manner. Combination of two isotopes of hydrogen, deuterium which has got a proton and a neutron and an electron evolving around it and tritium which has got a proton and two neutrons and got an electron evolving around it would give us the helium atom which has two protons and two neutrons and the extra neutron is also emitted and the rest would be the energy it emits. The helium atom here has less amount of energy, so the excess is released as excess energy. The main issue that the scientists faced in the creation of the hydrogen bomb was to create the isotope tritium. The isotope tritium was so hard to obtain, but they found a solution. What was the solution? The solution lied just inside the hydrogen bomb. They combined lithium and deuterium together to form lithium deuteride, which is a dry white color solid compound. The lithium deuteride is the fuel in the nuclear fusion process which happens inside the hydrogen bomb. So the question now is, how does the nuclear fusion occur inside the hydrogen bomb? It is really difficult when the atoms get larger and larger because they would repel each other as there is more positive charge in them. When positive charges come together, they tend to repel each other more and more. So the solution that the scientists had was to bring hydrogen atoms closer together. But here, they use deuterium and tritium in the reactions. The use of hydrogen here was they are less electrically charged as there is only one proton in it. So when we bring these close together, there would be less repulsion than having another atom instead of hydrogen. Still, the nuclei would repel each other as they are like charges. So how did they fuse them together? 
This was done by a huge amount of heat or temperature was really high in this instant. So how did they have this amount of energy or temperature related to it? The temperature was calculated in the astronomical scale. It was said to be around 100 millions of degrees of Celsius which is much more higher than the temperature of the sun. At this amount of temperature, the isotopes would form into a plasma. So they would release the electron and it would float with the nuclei on the plasma-like membrane. The nuclei would get closer and closer together. At an instant around 10 to the power minus 15 meters distance, the strong force comes to a play. At this moment, the proton and the neutrons would get together and form the helium atom we need and it could release the neutron also with energy of huge amounts. You must be wondering how can someone achieve a temperature as large as 100 million degrees Celsius? The hydrogen bomb is not a single bomb. In fact, there are three bombs inside it. They work together to create the destruction. A normal chemical bomb on the outside, a fission bomb which created destruction in Nagasaki and also a fusion bomb are the three bombs inside the hydrogen bomb. The destruction is created by the torpedo shaped ballistic missile. On the top of the hydrogen bomb lies the three bombs, the fission bomb, the fusion bomb and the conventional bomb which leads to the huge amount of energy. The chemical bomb on the outside would initiate the fission bomb and the fission bomb would initiate the fusion bomb and the process will continue. The outermost layer is the beryllium casing which would bring back the neutrons into the case by reflection. So it won't let the neutrons escape the structure of the vessel of the bomb. At the top of the bomb there is a small atomic bomb which is spherical in shape. At the border of the sphere, it is a conventional chemical explosive bomb surrounding a beryllium mirror similar to the one we had in the outside of the bomb which was a casing. The innermost part of the fission bomb is a sphere of plutonium or uranium. This is really small. It is around 4 to 6 inches in diameter. This is also the fuel of the fission bomb. Below the fission bomb is the fusion bomb. It has a uranium casing in it. The uranium casing however is cylindrical in shape and inside the cylinder is the lithium deuteride, the fuel of the fusion bomb. And the middle part of the bomb is the rod made out of plutonium which is also cylindrical in shape. There is also a styrofoam layer. This is the casing in between the fission bomb and the fusion bomb. So how does the reactions occur in the fusion and fission bomb and also the chemical bomb on the outside of the fission bomb? The conventional bomb explodes in a sequence. The force created will cause the sphere of plutonium-239 or uranium-235 to compress itself. The pressure of compression creates a new critical mass which will result in a chain reaction of neutrons splitting into atoms and it would create more and more neutrons splitting apart. This process is a fission process so it would release gamma rays and x-rays of really high energy. The huge amount of energy would convert the styrofoam layer to the plasma when it is being heated. We have a beryllium casing on the outside, so it would bring back the neutrons inside the vessel, so we would have a faster reaction inside. X-rays travel in the speed of light. The shock waves, however, travel in the speed of sound. So the X-rays would reach the fusion bomb to carry out the process. If it was the other way around, the shock wave would reach the fusion bomb before the X-ray so it would destroy our hydrogen bomb. The pressure and the huge amount of heat of the plasma would then compress our fusion cylinder. This would result 
in the emission of tritium with a neutron by the lithium nucleide we have inside the cylinder. The neutrons would then react with the uranium casing we have and also with the plutonium rod in the middle of the cylinder. This would undergo more fission reactions. So the reactions would occur from the outside of the vessel as well as from the inside of the vessel. So the fission fusion reactions will continuously act as a cycle to give the huge heap of energy outside. The fission and fusion process will occur continuously and the explosion would occur at a very large scale. It only takes around 600 billions of a second for all of these reactions to occur. Basically, it takes around 550 billion of a second for the fission process and 50 billion of a second for the fusion process. How do we have this extra energy? When you calculate the mass before the reaction and after the reaction, you could always obtain a lesser mass after the reaction. The energy is given by the famous Einstein's equation E equals delta mc square. So the energy we have is due to the reduction of mass we have. So guys, at present there are 6 main countries that possess these hydrogen weapons. India, Russia, United States of America, United Kingdom, France and China. These weapons are so expensive. So these are limited to few countries that are economically strong. This would not just kill one human being. It would just extinct the entire human race if these bombs are being dropped. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have a nice day.